Hello everyone. So in a previous video, we saw a framework for describing numerical data that included the shape of the data center, spread, and any unusual features. In this video, we're gonna look at more detail what we mean by describing the shape of a graph. In particular, the graphs that we're gonna look at are graphs such as histograms and dot plots that we saw in the previous video. So first of all, shape of a graph. So there are three main types of shapes that we'll see in this class. Those are symmetric, skewed left, and skewed right. So I'll draw an example of what each such graph looks like. So for a symmetric histogram, our data, when we look at our bars, looks symmetric, meaning kind of having this line of symmetry down the middle. Often we can sort of approximate the shape or kind of the cartoon shape uh, would have this nice uh, bell-shaped curve. So another word for symmetric, just another word for it, is bell-shaped. Turns out these types of graphs come up a lot in data that we might collect. So bell-shaped, often called normal because it happens so frequently. The other two uh, types of data that we often see or the types of shapes that we see of histograms are skewed left and skewed right. Skewed left graphs look like the following. We might have some bars here, and then we see our kind of lump of data over here on the right side. And for skewed right, it looks the opposite. So we have our chunk of data here, being sort of like a mound or a hill, and then the data sort of drops off, looking like this. So you might be asking yourself, well, why is skewed left having all of the data on the right? So when you're considering if the data is skewed left or right, you wanna ask yourself, where is the tail of the data? So skewed left graphs, or histograms have the data, or rather the tail, tail on the left. Skewed right has the tail on the right. So I'll just write that down to emphasize that point. So when you're considering skewed left or right, ask yourself where is the tail? Where has the data sort of fallen off the edge? If if that data wasn't there, then it would look nice and normal. So the data though is skewed or pulled to the left. Also when describing data, we have a sense of mode. Or rather we talk about the mode of a graph or of the data. So mode is often just a word used for the most frequent data values or the peak. So let me write that down so we have it. So mode, means most frequent data. So the data that comes up the most often, often the peak if we're looking at a histogram or dot plot. So there are four main types of modes that we see. So no mode means the data is uniform. So uniform is another word for this. And so data for a, a Histogram with no mode looks all about, mm, the bars are pretty equal. Unimodal graphs are graphs with, which contain one mode or one peak. So I'll write that down, one peak. So can you think of any shapes of graphs that are unimodal? right on all of the three graphs that we already looked at are unimodal there's one peak now bimodal graphs contain like you might think two peaks so they could look something like this maybe our bars are stacked we have a peak here and a peak here it would be bimodal two modes two peaks and then multimodal, what you might think, we have several peaks.
And you can draw your own graphs here too. There we go. So can you think of an example of any type of data that might be bimodal or multimodal? Well, it turns out if we graph or make a histogram of say heights, we often see bimodal behavior in the graph. Why might that be? Well, it turns out that if we separate our population into say two genders, uh, then often we have a mo mode or a peak of one gender and a peak of another gender's height. So now let's discuss a couple of features and outliers that we might see in our histograms. So outliers. And we're gonna compute more explicitly um, or use a computation to determine explicitly when we have an outlier, but we can think of an outlier that is an extreme value or an unlikely value. So how that might appear in histogram could be the following. So we have our histogram, we have, most of our data here, and then we have some data that's dropped to the side. So in this situ these types of situations, the outlier often skews our data. And again, that outlier are just the extreme values that are unlikely to occur. Often that means there might be an error that happened. We might see subpopulations. So this is very common when we're looking at data that we have, uh, where we have multi, multiple modes or more than one mode or peak of data. We saw this in the height example. So we might have subpopulations that consist of males and females. This also signifies to us that we might have some lurking variables. For example, another uh, variable or characteristic that's giving us this diversity or variability of our data. So I'll just carry that example of height. Um, gender could make up a sub uh, subpopulation. And we could even think of say subpopulations for data or histograms that are giving us, giving us multi-modes. Uh, let's think, for example, we could have say, if we're looking at fiber content, in bread. So if we collect all of the bread that we can at the local grocery store and create a histogram of the fiber content of the bread, we might see that there are several peaks like this. And why might that be? Well, we see that different types of wheat bread. So maybe we have white bread, wheat bread, multigrain, gluten-free, probably each of these subcategories has their most frequent uh, type of data content. So we see that often in these cases where we have uh, multiple peaks or multi-modes, we have sub a subpopulation that we could break our data into. We don't always break it into these subpopulations, but that's just a signal to us that maybe there's a lurking variable or some other characteristic um, that's creating these separations in the different modes. All right, feel free to watch any other or rewatch any parts of this video, and then we will continue with the next topic.